Hey, how's it going? It's Carl, AKA Carl Trump Tech. I'm here right now in Beverly Hills, California. I am here at the outdoor patio area where I work, which is a real estate brokerage here in Beverly Hills. But what I want to talk about today is that, you know, as I am recording this video right now, one of my favorite players and inspirations of all time, Kobe Bryant, uh, he's a basketball player for the Los Angeles Lakers, which is my favorite basketball team of all time. He is tonight getting ready to play his final game of his career. And I just feel like I couldn't tell the full story of Carl Drumtech and what I'm all about without first reflecting on um, Kobe and what he has meant to me in terms of it as an inspiration. And, uh, you know, as somebody who studies, like, you know, people who are really successful and who, are, who work really hard, almost to the point of obsession. Um, you know, Kobe is just a great person to uh, model after. Obviously, he's not the perfect person, um, you know, as you will see if you have not, you know, heard of him before. But, uh, you know, I just, I had to speak on, uh, you know, like what I've learned from him and what he has meant to me as an inspiration and what hopefully you can learn out of him and his story as well. Um, so the story goes, that you know, when I first, uh, when I was a senior in high school, you know, Kobe Bryant was just starting his career straight out of high school for him, uh, going into the professional leagues in the NBA, playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. And I just thought, you know, who is this kid? You know, this young kid. You know, just basically same age as me. He look, he seems extremely talented, but you know, obviously he's really young and all that stuff. But um, you know, as the years went on, you know, he uh, he worked really hard. He got a lot better and everybody saw the potential of what he could be. Everybody thought, you know, he's definitely gonna be a great player, but who knows, right? And then as he got better and better and better, um, you know, he, he won a couple championships early on in his career. You know, people thought, you know, that the, the possibilities for this guy is to be one of the best basketball players ever, you know? And uh, I thought it was just, you know, it's just one of those things where like, you know, as a Laker fan that excited me because, you know, obviously he's gonna help my team uh, to great heights, but at the same time, you're watching this guy progress into possibly one of the greatest of all time. And, uh, you know, like anytime you can witness somebody be, you know, one of the greatest in their field or their activity, um, I think uh, is, is, is tremendous. It has tremendous value to be able to watch that person, to model after that person and see what you can take from them to apply to what you're doing. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, Kobe was not, um, you know, the greatest person to work with. Uh, he was obsessive. He was so obsessive about winning that, you know, he, he didn't really relate to his teammates that well. You know, he took it so seriously that, you know, it really alienated a lot of players um, to the point where like, you know, if he you weren't working as hard as him uh, He basically didn't like you. He didn't like you. He didn't talk to you um, And he just did not relate to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and you know from a uh, From a standpoint of being a leader and trying to learn how to be a leader um, You know, I wouldn't necessarily condone that kind of leadership set but at the same time, you know, like his uh, success kind of speaks for itself. I mean, you know, the guy works extremely hard, harder than anybody. I mean, uh, you know, what you read in the press is that, you know, this guy works as hard as, you know, worked as hard as Michael Jordan, who is, is considered to be one of the greatest basketball players, who is considered the greatest basketball player of all time. And, um, you know, just everybody talks about how, you know, he's, he, he's the first person in the gym working out and practicing, and he's the last person in the gym working out and practicing. And you know, that can relate to drumming, right? Like, you know, how obsessive are you um, to getting good at your craft, at, in, in your activity, you know, as far as like, you know, how much do you practice? Do you practice more than anybody else? Do you put in more time than anybody else? Are you more obsessive about what you're doing than anybody else? And that is something that you can t definitely learn from, um, you know, but if you have that kind of obsession, if you put in that amount of time, you know, you may not be, you, you're not gonna be guaranteed that you're gonna be the greatest, you know, in your activity, but you're gonna be pretty damn good. And, you know, it's like, you know, if, and Kobe is just as human as anybody else. You know, it's like, if you can, if a human like him could put in the time and effort that he does and to be as great as he is, then you can also find your own greatness if you put in the time and if you put in the effort just like he does. Like I said, it doesn't guarantee success. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to be the greatest ever you know, at drumming or something like that, but definitely, 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 you will uh, get really damn good. <laughs> um, but you know, you're know, going back to you know just me following Kobe and his career. 
um, you know, it's just been a pleasure watching him, um, you know, just be the best at his craft, the best in this activity, um, you know, just uh, doing some impossible things that, you know, you didn't think were possible, but, you know, he was able to accomplish it. And, um, you know, it, it all comes to an end tonight, basically. And uh, I just feel like I had to kind of reflect on him, his career, what it's meant for me in terms of, you know, being inspired to work really hard at what I do, uh, whether that's through drumming, whether that's through um, teaching, whether, th whether that's through this new thing called Carl Drum Tech that I've created to try to um, you know, teach as many people as I possibly can through the internet, through social media, through this uh, medium called YouTube, and um, you know, it's just trying to be the best I could possibly be. You know, even just delivering these video blogs, it's like, you know, I, I, I do watch my video blogs every single time and I always think, what can I do better? You know, can I stop, can I stop saying um all the time? Can I stop looking up when I'm thinking? I always think about these things like, how can I make it better? And this is all inspired by people like Kobe who are obsessive about being better every single time, you know, adding something to their game to make themselves better, um, you know, finding every single angle, you know, just being like a real nerd about basketball. And you know it's kind of funny, right? Like you know, as band people, as band geeks, and as band nerds, you know, people make fun of us, you know, for being nerdy, for being geeky. But you know, it's it's funny, like you know, jocks, as we would say, call it, right? Um, you know, they they basically geek about the same stuff in in the same way, right? It's like you're always thinking about it, you're always talking about it, you're always like thinking about every single angle, you're trying to think of like how to be the best at every single little thing. We all have that in common. People in athletics and people who do music and band and drumming and things like that. We all have that in common. It's just it's funny. Like we're the ones that get made fun of it for you know for it, right? It's like we get made fun of for being band geeks, for being band nerds. But you know, Kobe is just as nerdy and just as geeky. But it's about basketball. So you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's like uh, I bet you, I guarantee you that if somebody were to make fun of Kobe Bryant for being a nerd, for being a geek. He is not going to be the type of person to let that get to him. He's going to be just like, all right, whatever. And he's just going to keep doing what he's doing. He's just treat, keep trying to be the best he can be. And he's going to be obsessive about it. He's going to be the best that he can possibly be. And nothing's going to stop that. You know what I'm saying? Like no kind of words, no kind of negative connotations is ever going to stop that. And you know, if you are kind of like hampered by that or slowed down by that at your high school or your school or something like that where somebody says, hi, oh, you're a geek, you're a nerd and you get affected by that, well, that's definitely gonna slow you down, you know, and it's definitely not gonna allow you to be the best possible version of yourself that you can possibly be in terms of drumming, in terms of playing your instrument, in terms of being, in, ter in terms of doing whatever you want to do, color guard, basket weaving, you know, painting, whatever it is that you wanna do, you know, you can't let nothing stop you. You gotta just keep, you know, uh, looking for every single angle that you possibly can to get better. Um, and that is the way to go, you know, and you know when I watch somebody like Kobe That is what I learned is that you know, you got to be relentless You got to be kind of a little bit obsessive. You got to be a little bit insane To get really damn good and maybe even possibly the best ever uh, in his case So um, you know that so if you don't know about Kobe Bryant, you know, definitely take the time to check it out um, You know, like I said you know, there's some things in there that are, you know, kind of like uh, not that great to hear as far as, you know, I mean, he's had some legal troubles. He's had, um, you know, teammates like not like him. He's had all kinds of people hate him. You know, like anytime, you know, like oh, there's a lot of people who hate Kobe Bryant. And maybe you're watching this right now. Maybe you're one of those haters too. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that like, you know, you may hate him or you might be a fan of him like I am. At the end of the day, we can learn a little something from everybody and you know you can't just like dismiss somebody just because you don't like them like for example everybody hates Donald Trump right well I'm sure not everybody right there, there, there are definitely some people who do like Donald Trump but you know you can take something from Donald Trump and see it as a learning experience like you know hey you know he's built some businesses he's a su successful businessman what did he do to be successful you know like um, you know just being successful in the presidential race like who who knew that this guy would be you know basically the Republican presidential nominee um, you know but you just watch how he talks and how he you know how he conducts himself like some of it's pretty ridiculous I know I understand that but for whatever reason, right, you have to study how he is being able to affect people to like him, to vote for him, to get behind him. That there's something to learn from that, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's what all I'm trying to say is like whether you can't just say, well, I don't like him, I'm not going to listen to him, or I'm not, not going to learn anything from him. 
yo, like, <laughs> if you do that, you are l horrendously limiting yourself if you do that. Learn something from everybody, and you can learn something from everybody. So, you know, and that's what's gonna make you better at your craft, at drumming, at playing your instrument, color guard, whatever the case may be, you know, so take Kobe Bryant, try to learn something from him, and uh, just be, obs uh, if you're obsessive, and you're crazy about your craft, and you're super geeky, and you're super nerdy about it, you're gonna go a long way, and you're gonna get really good. So, the last thing I'm gonna say is, you know, um, I just want to, you know, kind of thank Kobe for, you know, being that inspiration, and um, you know, it's it's really uh, bittersweet to think about that this is the end. Um, as a huge Laker fan, you know, as a huge fan of his, you know, it's just it's really bittersweet. But you know, I just thought that you know I would make this vlog right now. Uh, my thoughts are gonna live on forever, and it's gonna be out there. And uh, you know, again, I can't talk about the full story of Carl Drumtech without really relaying the fact that I'm a huge Laker fan, I'm a huge Kobe Bryant fan, and I learned so much from watching Kobe. You know, for basically he had a 20-year career, right? I've watched this guy for 20 years, ever since I was a senior in high school, and he's a, the same age as me, so we kind of have that bond in, in a weird way, right? And uh, you know, I've learned so much just from watching him, just from watching his work ethic, or at least not watching it, I didn't actually see it, but you know, just hearing about it, you know, and it's just like, it's insane. Um, you know, and, and uh, when I think about how hard he works, like, you know, there's no way I work as hard as him, there's no way. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, there's a, a lot of us out there who don't match that either. But, you know, if we step up, step up a little bit and we try to, you know, try to emulate that even a little bit, gosh, I mean, who knows what the limits really are. Um, you know, we can accomplish some great things. So that's what I'm trying to convey today. So thank you so much if you've been watching this video. I really appreciate it. Every single time people watch, you know, every single time people subscribe, people comment. I mean, it, it, it's, I truly do appreciate it. It really means a lot to me. So if you like this video and if you, like, and if you want more videos like this where I talk about some stuff and you might learn a thing or two, it would really uh, be awesome if you liked it, if you thumbed it up, if you commented. Commenting and engaging is great. I love talking to people. I love conversing. I love hearing your thoughts so that we can talk about it and like you know have this great discussion. I love doing that. And of course, subscribe so you can see more stuff like this. I have other videos as well that I think are just as awesome, if not more awesome, um, that hopefully you can also learn from as well. So. That being said, thank you again so much for watching, and until next time, take care, guys. Okay, let's do a little drum lesson here. So um, let's learn about flam accents. So flam accents are basically when you have a uh, accent pattern, like a triplet accent pattern like this, but you're gonna flam every accent. So a flam is where you play a grace note before an accent, okay? Uh, let's do a left hand flam. I normally want to be a little bit more closed in terms of the space between the grace note, which is the small note, and the accent. Okay, same thing with the left. Okay, more open would be like this, right? We want it to be a little bit more closed. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to play flam, left, right, flam, right, left so right hand flam left right tap and then left hand flam right left tap now there's a couple ways you can learn how to do this one is to do it exactly the way I did only slower than that so if you're a beginner and you're just learning how to do it you know the, the philosophy is that if you play anything slow enough you can do anything so even if you're a beginner you can play flam accents you can probably play a flam right where you just basically play a grace note right before you do an accent. Okay, as long as you do that, you're fine. Same thing with the left hand. Okay, so make sure you can do that first. Once you're able to do that, okay, so just do it really slow. You're gonna play a right hand flam, and then a left tap, and then the right tap, and then left hand flam, and then a right tap, and then the left tap. It's just that easy. If you do it really slow just like that, you can absolutely do it, no problem. Now, the trick is, right, getting it to go faster. OK, 
Okay, so once you do that, there's a couple ways you can break it down. One is just to play the first two notes, like the flam and the left tap, and then the flam, the left hand flam and the right tap. So you can go, or you can play the flam and then the third partial, right? The third note, triple let, right? And then flam, triple let. So you go. Okay, one more time. So you have the flam, and then the right hand, uh, the third partial, right, which is a tap. Okay, and then same thing, left hand flam, and then, the, and then the third partial on the left after the left hand flam. Okay, so together. Okay, but overall, I recommend if you're first learning this out, do it really slow. Just like I said, take it at like a quarter note speed. Take it that slow, I guarantee you, you can do it. And that's my tip of the day.